Hey scientists, so today we are going to be talking about landforms, um, land and water features. Alright, so the types of landforms. A landform basically is a feature that makes up the land at the Earth's surface. So basically sort of everything you can see um, on the surface of the Earth, landform. Alright, there's three types of landforms. The first are the plains, the second are plateaus, and the third are mountains. All right, first the plains. The plains are large, relatively flat areas. Two types of plains. There's a coastal plain, and there's an interior plain. So together they make up about half of all the land in the U.S. It takes up a large chunk of, chunk of real estate. All right, first we'll start with coastal plains. Our plains that are near the oceans, coast, coastal plains. So in the U.S., coastal plains are found along the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. So they're often called lowlands because of low elevations. So they're sort of characterized by rolling hills, swamps, and marshes. And this is a beautiful place, man. I think I like to kind of kick it on the beach right about, uh, right about there or um, maybe there. All right, so how coastal plains are formed. So the first way is, is as a continental shelf located below the ocean level. So what happens is the, as the ocean level falls, the land is revealed. So if, if the ocean's right here and the continental plain is right here, ocean, so it fades away, boom, you got yourself, you got yourself a coastal plain. So that's the first way. The second way is when river currents carry rock, sand, and other sedimentary material, and basically what happens is all these, all these sedimentary material are deposited and they become layers and then the layers build up over time and actually sort of rise above the water and uh, it creates a really a gentle flowing uh, landscape, a coastal plain. Our interior plains are, are inland flat grassy areas. This is a large portion in the center of the U.S. It's sometimes called the Great Plains. These things are huge. All right, so um, about 1,800 miles north to south, north to south, and about 500 miles east to west. So this is a big, big chunk of the U.S. Um, generally, this land is used to grow crops and to graze animals, sometimes called America's breadbasket. Breadbasket because we get a lot of what we eat from this part of the U.S., from the, uh, the interior plains. All right, plateaus. Um, love this picture. Beautiful. Uh, plateaus relatively flat, rise above surrounding land on at least one side, made up of horizontal rocks, uplifted by compression forces within the earth. Um, they rise steeply from the land, from the surrounding land around it. So, for example, the Colorado Plateau. Okay, there's someone off camera that's giving me like a hint. She's brushing her teeth. What, man? What's... Okay. I got, I got nothing. On camera, man, go away. Unless you want to be on camera with me. All right. Fine. What? No thanks. Okay, so we got a no thanks. Um, yeah, man, coming in. I, I'm, I'm teaching here. Um, all right, where were we? So, made up of horizontal rocks uplifted by compression forces within the earth. These rise steeply from the land. Um, for example, the example, the Colorado Plateau. Um, all right, so the two types of plateaus. So, there's the dissected plateau, which result from upward movement of tectonic plates. Um, the Colorado Plateau was formed by, by plate tectonics. Now this is um, sort of up for grabs. There, there um, some recent evidence uh, has pointed that maybe this was not, in fact, the way the Colorado Plateau was formed um, from plate tectonics. Because actually, it's like it's kind of crazy because the um, the edge of the tectonic plate of this tectonic plate that we're on is actually closer to California. So a little bit of a uh, question whether or not this is in fact a dissected plateau. But for right now, it's the best information we have. What we're going with. 
All right, so this covers most of the American Southwest. So this has been rising about 0.3 centimeters a year for the last 10 million years. All right, volcanic plateau. Uh, a volcanic plateau is formed by many slow volcanic eruptions over time. So not like a really <laughs> big one, but a lot of kind of, you know, kind of dribblers. Um, the lava flow builds up to form plateaus above the surrounding area. So it kind of finds a place um, and then just sort of eases out, eases out, and eases out. And eventually becomes a plateau rising above the area that surrounds it. So the North Island of New Zealand is an example of a volcanic plateau. All right, mountains. So these rise above the surrounding land. They're a little more jagged than the plateaus. Plateaus can tend, I mean, they're, you know, they're not completely flat, but they're not mountain pointy either. So um, mountains are more jagged than plateaus, even though they both do rise above the surrounding land. There's four types of mountains. The first is the Folded Mountain. The second is the Fault Walk Mountain. The third is the erosional mountain, and the fourth is the volcanic mountain. All right, folded mountains. This is like a perfect picture of, of folded mountains right there. You can almost like see them fold like that. All right, folded mountains. Um, internal forces push the rock layers together from the sides, so you've got compression. So you've got this area sort of in the middle right here, and then you've got a side here, you've got a side here, and they push together, and then shoo, up go the mountains. So you've got forces on either side that push in the middle, they got nowhere to go, so they just go up. Folded mountains. Um, compressive force. All right, these are commonly at the edge of the tectonic plates. Um, the types of uh, plates that we have, you can either have continental, which is a land plate, or oceanic, which is an ocean plate. So it is possible to have folded mountains as well underneath the ocean. Uh, if, if you've got the, the two, oce two, two oceanic plates colliding. Um, and of course, obviously, if you're on land, you've got two continental plates landing. Continental, continent. Oceanic, ocean. All right, so they push upward in a series of folds, as you can see in our picture here. So an example of mountains um, are the Himalayas, the Andes, the Alps, the Appalachian, and our own Rocky Mountains. But again, it's kind of crazy because, um, generally speaking, folded mountains tend to happen right at the leading edge of the tectonic plates. But as I mentioned in the last slide, um, our tectonic plate that we're kind of riding on is a little bit closer to California. San Andreas Fault is uh, sort of one of the leading edges of that plate. Um, but we're hundreds and hundreds of miles in from that. So it's a little bit of a mystery how we have folded mountains, even though we're so far from the leading edges of the plates. Yet another scientific mystery. All right, so fault block, fault block mountains. These are huge tilted blocks of rock um, separated by surrounding rock along their fault lines. So imagine like great big like Lego blocks, one way to think about it. So these are caused by tension forces. So you've got forces operating individually on each piece of the Lego. So um, the two, sli two side blocks slide down and the middle side the middle block slides up. So you kind of have them going like this. Um, they're sort of sliding past each other. Generally speaking, the middle block is the one that slides up, away from the two on the side. So here you, have, here you are going to have really sharp, jagged peaks. For instance, the Tetons and the Sierra Nevadas are going to be examples of fault block mountains. Erosional mountains. So this is where the water wears away the softer material, whether it be rain, um, rivers, what have you. The, the water is a very strong erosional force, wears away the uh, softer material, leaving, leaving the harder material behind. So an example of this is Cave Mountain in the Mojave Desert. And this is actually, um, this picture right here on the slide, this is Cave Mountain. So what happens is that the water just sort of wears everything else around. The, the, what's forming the mountain right there are, is harder materials and uh, it does not um, erode as quickly. So as the erosion continues, um, the area around the mountain is just lowered. So why doesn't the erosional mountain wear away too? That's a good question. Um, generally speaking, because a couple reasons. Because the first one is because it's harder, it's a harder material. And also, um, as sediment builds up 
uh, as you know, as as the erosion begins, as the erosion continues, you're carrying sediment. That's basically what's the land. The water's carrying it away. The erosion builds up in the riverbank, and that actually slows down the uh, the rate of erosion because it's just sort of battling with those little tiny rocks and all that stuff, rather than eating away at the actual floor of the valley. Volcanic mountains, beautiful shot. Love this shot. All right, the creation process. Um, molten material comes through the crust. And that material builds up, so you got a little bit coming out, a little bit coming out. Again, it's not like a really blow, blow its top kind of thing. It just kind of a little bit of a little bit of a creeping out, creeping out, creeping out. Gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The uh, material piles up, um, and which forms a cone-shaped structure. So an example of these guys are the Mid Ocean Ridge and the Hawaiian Islands. All right, that is it, uh, all about landforms. Hope you liked it, and uh, we'll see you later.